And now, The Good, The Bad, and The Weird presents... 12 Rom-Coms of Christmas Rant 2022 Edition. Last year, this is going to be another solo rant, just a heads up. So last year, Chris got me into watching shitty Christmas romance movies. And out of a somewhat continued curiosity, I decided this year to do a uh, 12 shitty rom-coms of Christmas. I've got my uh, Fireside Vanilla Tea already, uh, or Vanilla Spice Ready Tea up, all ready to go. Um, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see where this takes us. So uh, this year, I put a bit of an emphasis on watching more ones from 2022 with a few from the year before. Uh, this year's 2022 film selections were The Noel Diary, Falling for Christmas, Christmas with You, Christmas Full of Grace, Delivery by Christmas, and I Believe in Santa. As for the non-22 movies, uh, we picked a, Chris a California Christmas, A California Christmas City Lights, Single All the Way, A Very Country Christmas, A Cinderella Story, Christmas Wish, and The Holiday Calendar to round out all 12. So it ended up being about 50-50, but I started off with 2022 movies. And while we know there is the running joke that all Hallmark Christmas movies are about a career woman who's gone back to their small town to find, or, or town and find loves, boom, shit happens, I wanted to see if there was a... Uh, something else there because also i know that there are people out there who say there are three seven or even 62 basic plots out there um and i wanted to do a little exploration on the subject of christmas rom-coms myself just because i know they're so widely hated but people still watch them so and it's just something i've never really delved into before and while this year's selection may be a small sampling i'm hoping to, to continue this dive and refine it as i go um but before I get into the movie organization, I do want to talk a little bit about the movies themselves a little bit. To start, uh, for me, most of them were middle of the lane to mediocre at best. Um, something I think that many people will agree with, as there's a certain level of kind of fake happiness and self-discovery that comes across as slightly lazy. And not to bash people who like these kind of movies, but for the most part, they are rather cookie cutter and... It's, a lot of them have that feeling of like the soap opera where it's like, oh, of course this plot twist happens. This is where this plot twist happens and just keeps repeating the same kind of thing. Um, and now that I think about it, probably the better term is uh, commercial and mass produce is what they feel like. And when it comes to the movies, I want to go through and give the premise with a little bit of my thoughts just so that way it's not a blanket of, oh, I watched these. Here are my thoughts. I want to kind of go over the movies just a little bit and how I got to my thought process on this. So starting with the 2022 selection, first up is The Noel Diary. The Noel Diary follows a man who, after his mother's death, discovers a diary that may hold not only the key to his past, but also a young woman who is somehow tied to his parents. Overall, The Noel Diary is not terrible to start off with. I mean, it does start off quite different than other Christmas movies um, that I've seen up until now, at least. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that it seems to be the issue with many of these other movies is that they might start off interesting, but ultimately it delves into this cheesy romance that comes across as slightly forced. Despite that, it does have some charm for the most part, and the characters are likable, but it starts to begin this trope that we'll see throughout this entire selection, or most of this selection, that it's a lot of rich people finding their roots and because they went back to the more simple folk they're cha they're a changed person and the simple folk are better for it and by simple folk i mean the not not as well off people and next on the list i had some hopes for and was hoping it would be kind of a return for lindsay lohan but uh oh boy <laughs> falling for christmas was atrocious to say the best uh, it's about a heiress who loses her memory after a skiing accident and falls in love with the lodge owner, only to discover that her family is looking up to buy the lodge, which it's, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it just feels like you're very, it almost feels like a little bit of a cheesy anime plot where the protagonist forgets their memories and then realizes, oh, I was this horrible person. I'm better for finding myself and not just not a uh, not being who I was anymore I can't go back to who I was uh, but I mean immediately this movie does start off on a bad note everything's cheesy none of the characters are of interest uh, 
the act the character who's supposed to be the fiance ends up just being really obnoxious and a little too uh, what's the term pansy i guess for the type of character he's supposed to play and it just it does it just doesn't work at all with the it's supposed to be a comedic role and just doesn't work at all um and it, and that's the thing with every single one of these characters is it feels like everyone is a carbon copy of quote unquote enter the stereotypical character or stereotypical stereotypical role here i mean that that's the unfortunate thing with this one and that's the point of a lot of christmas movies is that there's a bunch of eye candy uh even the eye candy can't save this one for the most part at least uh the Christmas Prince had a little bit of something to it. It wasn't great, but it still had something more than something like this. And I, I'm starting to understand more and more why Chris puts the Christmas Prince up on this golden pedestal as like the premiere of shitty Christmas rom-coms because there is something a little to it. It's just not as dumb as some of these other ones. Continuing the trend of rich people recentering themselves with the common folk is Christmas with you. A story about a falling from the spotlight musician who, while trying to market an act of charity towards a fan, ends up, uh, she's using it to delay her writing of a new Christmas song and ends up falling in love with the fan's father while they work on co-writing a song together. Um, of the ones on this list, it isn't the worst. Uh, like the Noel Diary, it is still cheesy and, well, it's cheesy as all hell. With only a little bit of, like, Hispanic touch to it, I guess. Uh, the characters are, they're fine and enjoyable, but the movie does have a lot of odd moments, including a dance montage that doesn't really add anything to the story itself. Um, as well, it's rather interesting to see an attempt, it's a very light attempt, to bring the non-stereotypical foods to the uh, Christmas spirit as it leads as to the character connecting to her heritage uh, very ever so slightly. And it's just, it feels like a very light attempt to try and make something a little bit different than your standard Christmas movie. Uh, unfortunately, despite all that, the song for the movie isn't that bad. I mean, it's not an amazing song by any means, but it's still not bad. Like Christmas jingle. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just not something that I'd particularly venture out to see it just it, it has its cheesy moments and just ever so slightly deviates from the standard christmas rom-com only ever so slightly and continuing on to the uh next 2022 movie is the brazilian fr uh, flick christmas full of grace uh this one i'd have to say it's the most obnoxious movie i've seen this year and while I'm not very familiar with Brazilian cinema, um, but by my standards of movie, this was ridiculously overacted, and the entire cast was obnoxious. It, it, this one felt more soap opery than, honestly, Christmas with you. I mean, it just it just didn't hit any of like the good notes of being entertaining. Just everyone was over over the top. I, that's all I can really say about it. And. I mean, though I will say Christmas Full of Grace is a little bit different. It takes the humbling of the rich and uh, turns it into the main, well, not really the main character, the main love interest, Grace, as one who's intruding on the rich person's life to show that the holidays are not always about business and money and to get out of each, get out of trying to backstab each other. And sometimes you just have to live a little, which that being the stated the movie is not that entertaining at all it's just a bunch of grace doing random stuff to intrude and in. i mean there's a little twist here and there but it's just it's just kind of eh. and now we come to the little bit of an outlier uh there was this polish movie i watched uh delivery by christmas in delivery by christmas we follow a woman whose co-worker has mixed up her packages and now she has to work on Christmas Eve to return the right packages to the right people. And the reason this movie stands out is that while the uh, protagonist, Marissa, is accompanied by a rich businessman who ends up once again learning what it's like to live amongst the common folk, uh, Delivery by Christmas is more of a series of vignettes told through the people who received the wrong packages. Um, 
ends up being a little bit self-reflective as one small mis or not really a mistake one small vindictive act affects everyone else's lives think of it as a more uh, Christmassy VHS style movie where there is an overarching plot with smaller subplots also bringing people together for the holidays or being shown that they should be grateful for what they have uh, the unfortunate thing about Delivered by Christmas is that while the concept was interesting, it all felt rather shallow, like all the other Christmas comedies I've seen thus far. The vignettes, unfortunately, take away from the main story, and I at least ended up not caring really for anyone's uh, plights, since they all just felt like bite-sized. Even the main characters all just felt like part of an over like just part of a slight intrusion onto other people's lives, which I think is really a shame for what this movie could have been. Just It just didn't work, and it falls apart pr pretty early on, which it still has like a two-hour runtime. And now, I wish I could say I saved the best for last with the final pick of 2022's year's Christmas movies, or Christmas releases. Uh, this is... Probably the worst romantic comedy I've ever seen. That movie is I Believe in Santa. A movie about a woman who is dating a man who, despite being a full grown-ass man, still wholeheartedly believes that Santa is real. And no, we're not talking about, like, when specifically, like, my parents or my mom would say, uh, when I asked them if, if they believed in Santa Claus, that she believed in the Christmas spirit. This movie has nothing to do like that. We're talking about a full grown ass man believing that Santa Claus is a real life entity. And throughout the first part of the movie, I was thinking like, okay, maybe this is going to be a little bit like Santa Claus too, where he has to find a wife. And this dude is really Santa because that's kind of what it leads you to believe a little bit, just ever so slightly. And oh my God, <sighs> It just, it goes nowhere. This man literally believes, supposed, we're supposed to believe that this full-grown man believes in Santa. And, to be fair, the main crux of this issue is that the woman can't accept a man who believes in Santa, and I agree, she should worry a little bit. Because it's absolutely the dumbest thing I have seen in a long time. And I cannot fathom who thought, of, who thought that this would be a good idea for a movie. I mean... Everything about this movie is uh, obnoxious and moronic. I mean, it's execution and just lack of grasp on reality or grasp on attempted fantasy. It's not even done in a charming way. I Honestly, I think this is the worst movie of the bunch I've seen this year. And yeah, it's just, I do not recommend going out to try and find this one. Or, I mean, it's on Netflix, so if you want to watch it, watch it, but it is awful. And not in a good way. And now we move on to the non twenty twenty two movies. Uh, to start off the pair, to start off, I'm going to begin with the pair of a, a California Christmas and a California Christmas City Lights. Uh, the first California Christmas is about a wealthy son of a real estate tycoon who is looking to purchase a piece of land by posing as the new ranch hand of the farm that it's that they're looking to buy. This is one of the cheesier ones, and to no one's surprise, the protagonist has a change of heart. They fall in love, saves the day at the last possible moment through some one-off comment that's made a little bit beforehand. It's it's just kind of dumb. I mean, the same thing for the sequel as well. Um, the only difference is it takes place in San Francisco, and it's the male's past that leads to haunt them I guess and also the female leads a little bit but all of it is just the whole movie is based on misleading and just no one talking to resolve the issues to create the drama and not in like a good they're not trying to understand each other there's just no breakdown just like how could you I'm leaving okay I found out I was somewhat wrong oh I was also somewhat wrong oh we were wrong together we're good and I mean Unfortunately, both of them are about returning to your roots and the core of who you are. It just, they're just both bad. And honestly, some of the acting is really, really bad at times too. It just, it doesn't, there's nothing about these movies that really makes them special. And the only thing that makes them uh, Christmassy 
is that the time frame for everything happening is the dead is Christmas is the deadline. And that that's the only thing about it being Christmas. And just neither of them have that festive feeling. And the only thing that that's California about them is that it just takes place in California. There's it, it just it just Okay, we got California and we got Christmas. We got the setting and we got the timeline. That's all the movie is, basically, and just they're just not very good. And next up we have a very country Christmas following a very similar uh name set. And a very country Christmas, it's about a country music star who drops his entire career to return to his roots, only to once again find love. And this, like many of the other ones on this list, is about a well-off person returning to their roots. And honestly, I feel like I'm beating a broken record at this point. Granted, maybe I chose the wrong movies for this rant, because there were some last year that weren't the same, but this is where we're at, so... And in this one, though, the acting is fine, but it's nothing amazing. I mean, same can be said for the country aspect. Not much of it is charming and or all that interesting, to be honest. Like, it doesn't even feel like your charming old country town or your charming old small city. It's just a few small buildings we're in and a couple outside shots. And that's supposed to make it feel country, even though the guy lives in a very large house and has an interior decorator who's there relatively frequently even though he doesn't use it as his main home, and it's mainly his second home. And honestly, even the country aspect is rather lacking, as it it just... It, the only thing that, that's country about it is it takes place in a small town, and the lead is a country artist. That's the only thing. It's, it's like California Christmas, but trying to make it country without really being that, that charming. Which, I mean, honestly, I think is... That one could have been charming, and a lot of these I feel could have if they actually gave a little bit more of a realness to them instead of trying to create these fantasy worlds, I'll say. Just where things turn around so quickly and everything's hunky-dory and, well, name it something to get the eye of and anyone who's, oh, you like country music? Well, here's a very country Christmas. Oh, you like California or like the idea of living in California? A California Christmas. All we're, that's all we go with. And not even the LGBTQ community can uh, escape the grasp of bad Christmas romance movies with this year's single, or a couple years ago, Single All the Way. A movie about a man who is never in a relationship for long, so he decides to be, bring his best friend slash roommate to Christmas in a small city as a fake boyfriend, only to discover that his mother has set up a blind date with him for the only other gay man in town that happens to be a fitness instructor. Um, of the movie so far, this is the only one that really feels Christmassy with the family drama, the aesthetic, and all the setting all together works quite well. And the writing, for the most part, is some of the better writing for this for all these movies so far, but it does have its quite cheesy moments. The acting is pretty good, too. Um, it just fell flat due to some of the really really bad moments in the movie like just cheesy okay teehee were flirting kind of moments and the story felt a bit all over the place as we bounce around the family members and I mean I know it's supposed to add depth and stuff but it just ended up being there were so many characters that I couldn't keep track of who was who who was doing what what was their purpose like it just it didn't lend itself to be a fully fleshed out movie for what it could have been and of course it does end cheesily that's the whole point of these movies second to last we have a bit of an odd one in this selection a cinderella story christmas wish this one's a bit different because it leans more into the younger age range and it's a musical at that um it's a reimagining of the cinderella story only instead of a prince and a downtrodden girl it's a downtrodden girl who lives relatively comfortably and the son of a billionaire who happens to also be playing Santa at his family's own or his family owned Christmas themed amusement park uh, where the protagonist works as an elf. Like single all the way, a Cinderella story Christmas wish is rather festive and fits with the theme of the holidays and everything. Um, but 
other than that, for the most part, the story is pretty much just your just a retelling of S- Cinderella story, just with a slightly modern twist of social media, and it just ends up being generic and lacking overall. But I will say it is interesting seeing something that's not aimed for the uh, much more older audience. This one is one that could easily be watched by, say, a preteen or someone in that age range, and enjoy it. I I would assume, um, but it just. If you've seen Cinderella, you've seen this movie. There's they don't do any real interesting twist on it. it just kind of, it's just kind of, eh. Again, like most of these movies are for me. And the final movie of the tw- of the twelve rom coms of Christmas is the Holiday Calendar, in which a photographer re- uh, receives a holiday advent calendar from her grandfather that seemingly predicts the future and soon leads her to meet a doctor as one of her longtime friends returns to town for the holidays. And by this point, I may have uh, been a bit burnt out, to be honest, on these movies, uh, but the story pattern is and style is rather similar to that of Single All the Way in the holiday setting and the magic of the season, rekindling with old people, old friends. But it just... It's just another... Christmas rom-com with a little bit more serious tone and just doesn't it just doesn't feel like anything special or and there's nothing that really feels like it drives the movie it just one thing happens to another this person's not who they say they are that person has feelings for this person oh no the feelings have been mutual forever oh it's Christmas there's eye candy that's all you gotta say about it And having gone through what I thought would have been a random assortment of movies, I mean, granted, I just picked something that seemed, okay, that one, that one, that one. Granted, I picked them all off of their title alone, but I think that says something about the marketing and how these movies actually work out in the end. Um, And I came to realize that at their core, the archetype of Christmas rom-coms in this selection is a returning of the roots and redis or rediscovering of oneself. Uh, this is the whole overarching umbrella that is the Christmas romantic comedy. While there are movies that begin to diverge on how that journey is approached, the theme overall never really changed. That is seen through like the stereotype or that is seen through the tropes of returning to your hometown or going back to a simpler life to rediscover the more human side of the character who's kind of lost it. Which, I mean, it also goes on a physical journey outside of your comfort zone. Um, And kind of a light telling of a story of rebirth, something that's, I guess, rather fitting for this time of year. And while they might be similar in their approaches, there is something that sets them apart even a little bit. While all the movies are about returning to your roots and self-reflection, I think the two broad categories I'm working with this year and going forward is the it's the return of how it's of how the returns approach. It's done either via nostalgia or via fish out of water experience. In this year's selected viewing, I would say the return to nostalgia stories were The Noel Diary, A Christmas or Christmas with You. I Believe in Santa, Single All the Way, A Very Country Christmas, The Holiday Calendar, A Christmas Story, Christmas Wish. Um, As for the Fish Out of Water stories, uh, those came in the form of A A California Christmas, California Christmas City Lights, and Christmas Full of Grace. While this is still, I'm still working on this theory, there is one that didn't really fit perfectly into either category. That being Delivery by Christmas, which mainly focuses on the nostalgia element with a few fish-out-of-water moments placed in. The reason this one is hard to categorize is the lack of full singular plot like many of the other ones have. It doesn't really follow the escapist nature of the previous mentioned movies as well, but it does have a little seeing how the other side lives through one of the main characters. And it's just one of the ones that I couldn't fully cleanly put into one category or the other. And I hope to try and figure out how to 
or where to fit it in or if there's another category of these types of movies in the years to come. But in this initial exploration, I think there were some important aspects or tropes to recognize in why these kinds of movies are either loved or hated. Uh, to start, I think it's the simplicity in the whole ordeal. While, while some like the Noel Diary might try to be slightly deeper, the driving forces feel like they uh, drive the character superficially. On top of that, while I get movies are constrained to time, the portrayal of how quick these relationships are coming across is, are very fairy tale esque and not the, oh, we are playing off classic fairy tales like A Cinderella Christmas Wish, but it's like this is the year, uh, this year is magical, so thus the romance is magical and it happens in the span of a couple days, and boom, we're soulmates. It just feels artificial in its storytelling. Another commonality I came across was this concept of the rich and the poor coming together and to an understanding with each other, usually with the humbling of the rich person and thus become it, because they fell in love with the person who is in hard times, they, they can make their lives better now and become more philanthropic in many other regards, uh, or in some of them as well. Uh, just a further continuation of the prince with the hidden princess trope from fairy tales. Um, also kind of pretty woman, like in a, in a way, um, which I do like pretty woman. I think that is a great movie at the end of this. While I don't particularly care for any of these movies to say the least and do not recommend them. I'm also not trying to shit on people who do like these kind of movies. I'm trying to kind of understand why these movies are liked partly because I watch a lot of garbage in other genres, but I think the driving factor for watching these kinds of movies is that they are simple popcorn watches for the holidays, much like a lot of the movies I watch for my free time and just garbage in general, bad sci-fi, bad horror. They're just fun, light movies to have. But there is also a certain level of dreamlikeness with the what if or if only while playing on the nostalgic trends. It, it feels very much so like whenever the lottery is large, people are always like, what if? Oh, if only I had that money. It feels like this kind of moment when people want to have a fantasy romance of a quick thing that happened and, oh, I fell in love forever. Everything was hunky-dory after that. And while I don't think having seen a couple dozen of these movies makes me an expert on the matter, because I did watch a handful last year as well, but I didn't include them on the list because I didn't have time to rewatch. Um... It's interesting to see the other side of the holiday's perspective instead of my standard holiday violent and gory horror films. Um, but if I had to pick what I would recommend to actually watch, if you ever feel so inclined, I would say either go with The Noel Diary or Delivery by Christmas or Single All the Way. All three of those have something of interest to them. I am a little hesitant on Delivery by Christmas because it is a pretty slow and scattered movie for the most part. And I mean, even this is just a watch it if you want to, not a full recommendation from me because I would highly advise against watching these, especially I Believe in Santa. That is the absolute worst movie I've watched this year. I, I might I might say it is the worst year movie I watched this year, but we'll find out when I go back through the log of movies I watched. But anywho, this is the end of uh, this year's 12 rom-coms of Christmas rant. I'm actually kind of looking forward to doing this next year and seeing how this series evolves as I see more of these movies that are outside of my normal wheelhouse of movie watching. But I hope everyone has a fantastic holiday and Chris and I will see you bright and early in the next year. But this has been the Good, the Bad, and the Weird Spotlight Solo Rants with Nico. Peace. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by this here town of the good, the bad, and the weird. We appreciate your listenership, and if you want more of our takes in your life, feel free to check us out on social media at the good, the bad, and the weird podcast, or TGTBTW for short. As well, if we missed a fact, your favorite part of a movie, or just have a suggestion and want to reach out and say howdy, feel free to email us at TGTBTWpodcast at gmail.com. And feel free to join our Discord at the Good, the Bad, and the Weird podcast where we talk about movies, just share random banter here and there. 
And always check out our podcasters, streamers, or any other content creator we shout out in our episodes. We really appreciate it. And as always, thank you for listening. Peace.